people lose their loved ones and they go stare crazy a different kind of pain for me five stages of grief my mind could not work it out in this case you have to do your own part love the people you love pray for them every day hi guys welcome back to my channel my name is Bromond and I have missed you all so very much now we're back for good and we're resuming posting content weekly so if you're new here this is Bromond and on this channel we where we I talk and you listen talk about mental health behavioral culture and generally living your best life if you have suggestions of topic or subjects you would like me to talk about don't hesitate to send me a dm on any of my social media platform dream one is the name across all platforms or you drop it in the comments here today we are going to be talking about navigating grief moving forward after losing a loved one um some of you will be wondering is that why she's wearing black well a week ago i got a very sad news and i'm going to attach the sms here and you don't want to imagine how i felt at that moment because the story is quite lengthy but i'm going to give you a short version i was meant to meet with the my friend on the day i learned that he had gone to the great beyond so it was a different kind of pain for me i had experienced loss before now but it was different right i would you know i lose a loved one and i deal with it you know sometimes it's expected and sometimes um well it was bound to happen anyway so i accept it but this time around it's like i'm waiting for you fam yo you've not responded to my uh, uh, my messages what's going on and then i hear oh and, and i couldn't process it for a while you know and for someone like me who likes closure i had to go you know to the point where we're supposed to meet and find out it was if they were kidding because it happened on 2nd of april so i thought maybe it was a bad april fool's joke right and i'm wondering why would you want to joke with me with such an information well it turns out that it was true so here we're going to be talking about the five stages of grief um some of you already know but for purpose of those who don't know there are five stages some people say there are seven stages but even if there are seven stages all of them can be combined to five stages the first one is denial right shock and denial and like i stated that was why i didn't believe that that was what was happening i was in a heavy state of denial like how can it be you know my mind could not work it out the first stage would have to be denial and the last stage would have to be acceptance so in between you can experience them differently from another person so the first stage for me was denial obviously the second stage is guilt and bargaining the first stage is anger and pain the first stage is depression and sadness you can say it's the same thing and the final stage is acceptance and hope right so i i left the stage of denial to a stage of bargaining myself so i started wondering at the time where because it was an accident right he was hit by a vehicle and what have you and at the time when he was hit we're supposedly supposed to be together but he had like a different schedule so i started thinking maybe i should have insisted that we saw when we we're meant to see maybe i would have protected him from you know that incident or whatever i just felt somehow it was my fault maybe I, if i were there but you see the thing is i'm not god there was nothing i could do at the moment it didn't work out so we rescheduled 
to the next day but somehow i just felt like i should have done better so that was me trying to negotiate and then i became angry when i heard the incident that he was rushed to three different hospitals and he wasn't giving proper care and attention then i was annoyed and i annoyed at the nigerian system annoyed that they failed my friend you know annoyed at the government everything the vehicle that hit him you know i was just angry and i felt like maybe there was somebody i could jack their shit at, at that point the way i felt if i saw the president i would have told him a piece of my mind right and then from that stage i just entered an overwhelming state of you know <laughs> really now i want to call it depression but i was sad i was deeply sad there was nothing i could do you know i had plans for that weekend but there was literally nothing i could do even if, even though i knew that life has to keep happening but i didn't have the energy anywhere to do anything I couldn't even eat right i couldn't get myself to eat i couldn't get myself to stand up there was a lot of things that i just kept you know moving like i started to imagine that this my friend had dreams you know the 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 last conversation we had we even have like a continuous conversation right we're supposed to talk about something that i had moved so i was feeling all sort of ways maybe i should have made had that conversation then you know <sighs> farm it was terrible then i i went through his social media page and i saw that he had been buried i mean he died at 27 there's no need to um waste time with the burial so naturally they buried him almost immediately and that was when i began to accept that okay my friend has gone um i might not see him in this world physically until we meet again in the great beyond you know and i started to come to terms with it but it doesn't mean that i don't still get overwhelmed i still cry sometimes when i remember it right and i find that i'm never going to stop m missing him right I'm never going to forget the conversations we had, the impact he had on my life. I am just going to remember him with fondness, like the, the projects that I agreed I was supposed to do. For me now, I'm never going to back down on it because I don't have him to explain why I'm not going to do that anymore. So I have to keep to my own part of the bargain, right? So this video is talking about how to move on for it. I decided that in my own case, I'm going to honor the memory of him. For everything I told him I was going to do, I'm going to do that. And each time I remember him, thankfully my friend has works that he has put out there. So this is these are like his legacies and they are going to outlive him. I'm going to keep sharing his published works. He was a writer, you know, to the very end. The fact that he's my friend means I understand a bit of how he thinks. So I'm going to try to explain to people who are asking, what did the author have in mind? In my own way, I'm going to try and explain to them, this is what I think he would be thinking. But, I mean, life has to move on. I'm not saying move on and forget that you lost a dear one. I'm just saying move forward with it. Do things that you know that the person would love you to do. I'm sure that there's nobody that dies that doesn't want their loved one to move forward but it's going to be tough at first but this video is to encourage you that regardless of what has happened regardless of how your loved one exited that you have to keep it moving not saying you should forget about your friend doesn't mean that if you continue to walk you have forgotten about their memory or you're not honoring or respecting them it just means that if you live life if you say oh i'm not going to move forward life will leave you i don't know if you understand there's no purpose staying depressed for so long you have to try to pick yourself up and how do you do that cry when if you must cry there's no chest in it there is no oh 
I don't want to seem weak and whatever. There's nothing like doing too much. Get your closure. If you want to find out how the person died, by all means do. If you don't need the details, please don't go looking for what is not missing. So you just have to find a way, whatever way that works for you. Now there are a lot of people that are going to come to be condoling you and they will say, oh, it's okay now. Especially if you lost maybe someone older, they'll say, oh, the person has lived long now. Why are you crying? Don't pay attention to those people. You have the memories you shared with your loved ones. You have to honor them. Whatever you need to do within that first week that they have passed, do them. And just bear in mind that you have to keep moving. They want you to live your own life. They have lived their life. They have gone. You have to continue to find a way to live your own life. And if you're watching this and you've ever told somebody, ah, don't cry, move on. Nah, you shouldn't do that. Don't ever tell somebody how to grieve. You cannot, um, there's no handbook, right? You can't tell somebody this is how you're meant to do it or this is how I did it because we're different people. We have different personalities. What works for you will not necessarily work for me, right? It worked for you because that is how you were socialized. That is how you were raised or that is how you had chosen to live your life. But it's not going to work for me. You have to allow people grieve in their own way so long as they are not hurting others and they are not hurting themselves now where you have to intervene in their methods of grieving is if they feel oh my loved one was shot at so i have to shoot everybody in that premises no that's that's not okay that means you're you're mentally you're going to a place that you're not meant to be the loved one is dead there's no amount of um revenge that you seek or that you have that is going to bring them back so you have to know that in your grieving you don't have to go after any other life now an eye for an eye does not apply in the case of death because now the person is dead they're not going to come back so maybe if you have to force yourself to come to the stage of acceptance then you do that the person is dead you can be seeing them in your dreams it's okay you can be watching the videos you had with them you know replaying conversations and what have you is okay but what is not okay is trying to seek other lives you know because you are hurting and i also want you to know that the hurt is going to reduce now it's never going to stop like stop stop but it's each time when you remember it's not going to be as painful as it was the first time you heard it right you're going to move forward with it now what you do with that is up to you how you honor the memory of your loved one is up to you like i'm Igbo by tribe and where i come from the people do lavish burials especially when they are honoring their parents i think for them it's just to show that i sent you home in a grand style my personal preference is love up of people while they are here whatever ceremony you do after they are gone is for you it's not for them because they don't know that if you love somebody go ahead and tell them that you love them don't wait till they are gone and then you write it in their tribute and when you're loving somebody love them in their love language in that way they will understand that you love them in another video i'm going to be talking about the five love languages i need you to find out love language of your loved ones now that they are here and you love them like that that way their love tank can be filled and it's going to reduce the guilt you feel after they've left this world now very importantly you must know that death is inevitable i sitting here i'm going to go one day everybody you love is going to go one day now none of us knows the other we are going to go nobody knows who is going to go first or second right nobody knows if someone is going to go together but we all pray for long life and you know, and everything that comes after it but while we are here we have to do the best we can you know to love up on the people we claim to love there are lots of times that people say oh i wish i had um picked their call when they were calling me. the guilt how do you minimize the guilt you have to live a very intentional life 
right now everybody every one of us is very busy especially if you're an adult very busy you have to create time to show the people that you love that you love them you have to be with them you have to return those text messages you have if you're having any issue you have to talk about it trash it you don't want to go or you don't want somebody to go to the great beyond and you have like unresolved resentment now that we are here we can only control this time so if there's somebody that you need to call you've been avoiding their call or you felt they've done something to you in the past today is a good day after watching this video put that call across if there's something you want to clear your mind clear it we don't know how much time we have left we think we have 120 years we don't know that for certain we don't know but what we do know that we we might not get to say those things we wish we want to say and life will be more difficult living with regrets i'm not going to tell you that i know why your loved one went i'm not going to tell you how to feel about that if you feel they went unjustly you seek justice in the right manner but most importantly if you're a christian if you're a muslim you pray you pray that the lord accepts their soul you pray that your burden on earth, the guilt, the pain, is lighter. And if you know a family or a friend who is grieving, you pray for them. That they have fortitude to bear the loss. Because sometimes people lose their loved ones and they go stare crazy. Yes. But in this case, you have to do your own part. Love the people you love. Pray for them every day. And then pray for the people that are have gone and the people that are still here may we all do what is right and may we continue to live a life that is pleasing to god until next time my name is brilmont and if you're yet to subscribe please subscribe share to your friends and family who you think will need to see this god bless you